Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Upper right in corner, we have Machine starting as the Grey Zerg. Bottom left hand corner, we have Kiko starting as the Yellow Terran. This is going to be on Good Night, another macro oriented map. I'm almost wondering if this was preset or Kiko's choice. But game one, we saw Machine doing Machine things. Really, there was the critical moment where that Medic Marine Force got obliterated by a whole Lurker grouping. And from there, it just didn't feel like Kiko was able to restabilize and catch up to Machine's macro. Which shows you in this matchup where Kiko's strengths in the other matchups has absolutely been his macro. It's hard to beat Machine in a heads-up macro match. And I'm wondering if Kiko is going to do something a little bit more creative to try to compensate now moving forward. I'm not sure that I said colors. Bottom left and quarter, Kiko, yellow, Terran, upper right hand. I did it a little bit differently, so now I feel like oddly off as that happens. Overlord's going to scale across that northern corner. I do feel like Kiko, again, is still one of those players that's capable of taking games away from Machine, and he's got some matches to figure it out. This is going to be a best of seven. So dropping just one match is not a big deal. But once he's starting to drop two matches, it gets a little bit scarier. Kakaru, why do they just leave him with the five hit points? Is it so they're easily slaughterable? And also, is it just for the... Because when you think about it, the flying doodads, it's just there for the Terrans to be cruel to. He's trying to hide at the bottom of the map this time. Because uh, Zealots can't attack air, Zerglings can't attack air, and that's like the tier one unit for... But Marines, Marines can attack air. Anyway, Barracks. Online for Kiko. Looks like we're seeing another 12th hatch for a machine. To be expected from him on a four-player map. He's scouting bottom right hand corner first, as is Kiko, so they should end up scouting each other's base. Approximately the same time. Second SCV moving out for Kiko because he wants to make sure he gets. It's unfortunate when this happens for Terran, I think, at cross spawn positions. Because at the close spawn position, you have that guaranteed information to know that you don't need to plop down anything additional with. However, when it's cross spawn, that means you have to dedicate that SCV out even longer, which means. A little bit additional mi lost mining time. Supply Depot down. First Marine being produced. Should be able to box out that drone at the very least. Deny information. SCV Scout now moving up. Going ahead and confirming that hatchery. But I've seen some players do. Which I... I thought is clever. Is go for that quick attack. Looks like that spawning pool coming online. A single larva left. To produce those two Zerglings. Gotta be four Zerglings actually. And a command center now being built for Kiko. Let's see if he goes again into that two racks play. I do think that the standard two racks play against a player like Machine is a mistake. Because it's kind of the bread and butter Terran build. Go two racks, Academy, eBay. And you saw how Machine really handled that. Kiko did have some creative play. Ooh, a larger grouping of Zerglings this time. All six of them dedicating to the bottom left. Kiko did skip a bunker previously, so I'm wondering if he's going to try to make... So it's a supply depot to go ahead and blockade. I wonder if he's going to try to punish him for it this time. Maybe Machine looking at the replay in between, going again for two hatch lair. SCV not wandering up to spot it just yet. But the Zerglings, yeah, in the wings, looking to be trouble... There are four Marines here, and that's plenty to deal with, but it can result in a few additional Marine kills. And yeah, getting a surround. One Marine down, two Marine down. So three Marines. No bunker. SCV's being pulled, so this is going to cost some mining time. This Marine also getting hunted down. So all of the Marines look like they're going to get taken out. Marines are so fragile. So yes, the Zerglings got taken out, but a lot of SCVs having to be pulled off the main... Two barracks up, plus they got all that scouting information. And that's going to slow down the Marine count as a follow-up, because that's five Marines that were not alive at this moment otherwise. Two additional Zerglings moving across. Looks like they were trying to hunt down that SCV. That SCV is still able to stick here and get that scouting information. And the Spire already on the way, so Kiko needs to get an engineering to pay down ASAP. Is potentially going to need to overproduce turrets to support. Otherwise, this could be a very fast game. And the thing is, his machine doesn't even need to press or dedicate here. He could 
just go for the standard build and have a comfortable economic lead right now. Just four workers behind Kiko. So in a pretty solid position there. Has to be able to confirm the hatchery in that bottom right-hand corner. Although Kiko really can't do anything about it this time. Five Marines. The double barracks pumping. Engineering Bay being plopped down. There's the Academy. And I'm almost wondering if the, we're going to see... Oh, never mind. This is a clever play. I like this. Kiko building a proxy barracks in the bottom right-hand corner. He knows he's, blo uh, he's blocked in anyway. So might as well try to do something sneaky here and take out a hatchery. Potentially, this will draw the Mutalist forces back. Additionally, might be able to get a hatchery kill. However, the Mutalisks now being produced for a machine. He does have a second gas, so he can produce a lot of Mutalisks fairly rapidly. No medics supporting these Marines. Or sorry, take it back. There's the medics to support the Marines. They were just waiting on the high ground for some reason. Stimpak at least is going to be finished, but this is going to be the story here. Barracks finished, bottom right-hand corner. Mutalisks are making their way this direction for... Oh, they just barely don't spot it though. Why are they even rallied down here? Is this one? Does he... S he sees it. Okay, does he respond though? Did he see it on the... Okay, yeah, the Mutalis now drawing back. So now, oh, this is devastating now for Kiko. Because this Marine's going to get wiped out. He's going to lose this barracks. And so Machine now going to basically get free economic damage in the form of 150, 200 minerals now. Really, 300 minerals if you count. So 250 plus Marine mining time. Single Mutalis being dedicated to take that barracks down. The rest of the Mutalists gathering up to go ahead and assault the front. A cancellation of something on the front. And I don't know that Kiko has enough turrets. Two turrets, decent medic marine splash. Depending on the engagement point for a machine, he could get a lot of damage done. Three turrets at the natural expansion. Four turret going down. Eight Mutalists waiting in the wings. Pushing in, able to pick off a Marine right there. Only taking a little bit of damage. And this turret, yeah, at risk. Zergling actually siphoning, siphoning, pressing up. Yeah, that turret, not long for life. And that's going to expose this edge. Marines grouping up. Ooh, machine, however, overextending. Walking right over the... Marine Ball and taking a lot of damage there. Kiko adding that third barracks and a starport. He's going to be lighter on Marine troopings, however, in the mid game. At least this barracks is going to get scouting information, but I don't think it's the scouting information it wants to see. It's going to see a Queen's Nest, which means Hive is on the way, and Kiko's still not really in a position to press out. Carapace is finishing. I'm wondering if Lurker Tech was actually skipped by machine he's he's tacking on additional hatchery in that bottom right hand corner perhaps realizing that kiko needs to stay in his base because of the lower marine count here in the mid game potentially skipping lurker tech going ahead moving to hive and playing from there carapace upgrades along the way more mutalisks pressing forward they now have that carapace upgrade and yeah they just need to hover out here and make sure marines do not sneak out of the base and that they are. You can tell the... Whatever the turn rate is, it's a little bit more challenging for... The Mutalist Micro, but it does not look like it's making a difference. Because the machine's still able to get plenty of damage done. Hive is up. Additional hatchery, fourth hatchery being plopped down that bottom right-hand corner. Carapace upgrade along the way. Machine a little bit distracted with his Mutalist Micro. Looks like I missed perhaps a bit of an exchange there on the front. Looking, there's the Defiler Mound. Double Starport starting to pump science vessels, but I don't think they have a Radiate researched yet. Now, there might have been a mistake. Never mind, Lurker Tech did finish. I just missed the timing of it all. So Lurker's now out on position. 
Is that Overlord going to get wiped out? Small mercies here for Kiko, at least able to take out an Overlord. But Machine's Worker count now very close to Kiko's. His supply count dangerously close. Ultralis Cavern, not that far from finishing. Second Evolution Chamber. Kiko has some Medic Marine Forces, but really, I don't know that he's going to have success at any location trying to breach. Irradiate not finished yet as well. Single Marine going to go ahead and check out bottom left. Maybe to confirm that, okay, yeah, there are lurkers on the ramp. So right now, Kiko just needs to hold up and weather the storm. Starting to migrate towards the north. Maybe just make sure that Machine doesn't sneak a lot of troops out because as soon as the Ultralisks and other units start moving around on the field in the mid game, it becomes very difficult to contend. However, the Mutalisks with those Medic Marines out of position, going for a backstab, able to get several SCV kills. Although that's kind of like, they're the Marines that were dead. Oh, and the able to get an Irradiate, but some damage done on the Science Vessel. Another irradiate dropped, a decent split by machine on the initial irradiate, but it looks like he is going to be able to preserve preserve a handful of these mutalists. However, they're severely damaged. The Matic Marines now marching towards that natural expansion without science vessel support, which means these defilers are going to be free to go ahead and drop swarm, whatever else they want. The Marines actually pressing forward. I think this was miscontrolled group from Kiko, so Kiko feeling the pressure here. Science Vessel's pushing in. Not going to even bother dropping an Irradiate here. Plague being upgraded as well. Ultralisk upgrades on the way, but no Ultralisks yet taking the field. Machine has plenty of gas, however, to make that happen. In fact, feels comfortable enough that he's going to go ahead and march down and with that Medic Marine Ball at his natural expansion, is very comfortably going to grab the natural expansion in the bottom right. Kiko potentially going to set up to grab his third to keep his economic lifeline somewhat intact. A drop in the bottom right. There are Zerglings, Defilers, and Lurkers to potentially deal with this. However, they're moving out of position. Kiko may be going to find some space to get himself back in the match here. Plague on those Marines on the front. In the interim, here comes the attack in the bottom right-hand corner. Looks like they are going to be able to get a handful of drones. Wow, actually completely emptying that drone line, so a very successful attack here. Also, the Lurker's not burrowed, so potentially these Medic Marines going to be able to move forward, but that's pinning them to the front, keeping that Defiler from going ahead and dropping a swarm to clear things up. And those Marines are behind that mineral line, which means more Zergling is going to need to be expended, and as I say that, the Marines... Just getting obliterated. They do have plus two weapons. I figured I felt like that should have gone better than it did. Irradiates clearing out some defilers on the front. Kiko also able to get some Zerglings here. Third base coming online. Trying to do something to go ahead. Getting a nice irradiate on this defiler. It's actually hurting some drones here in the background, but Machine just holding the line here. Actually getting a drone kill out of that. Ultralisks starting to take the field. And a whole lot of Ultralisks starting to take the field. Where are you going, drone? Drone somehow sneaking out, making its way to that bottom right. So Kiko now has position. However, Machine has a supply lead. And as soon as those Ultralisks pop... It's going to be tough. Kiko going for another drop in that bottom right-hand base. Science Vessel is going to get taken out in exchange for a Lurker. Kiko again wants to try to pin some of these troops. Might be able to get another decent lane clear as by threatening towards the front, it's keeping defenses away from the main, again moving to that bottom right-hand corner. This time, Machine sees it, is able to save all but two drones and might lose an Overlord. That's going to put him in the... loses... no, does not lose the second Overlord. 
Also losing control looks like a bit of an attack force, expending it here on the front. Gonna be a cleanup operation. Not sure about that Dark Swarm placement. It's gonna take a while for, and that's gotta be the worst sight ever for Marines. Just seeing a wall of Ultralisks pushing through everything. So economic delays. Kiko does have the supply lead, but there's still a lot of Ultralisks out there and the Science Vessel count still hovering at four. And I haven't seen these Irradiates be as act incredibly active, at least not as active as I would expect a game winning uh, turn to be. The Ultralisk wandering around damaging his own units. Come on, Ultralisk, get things together. Mutalisk making their way bottom right. Kiko does have some map control here though, but I don't know how long it's gonna last as the Ultralisks are starting to group up to go ahead and breach bottom right. Kiko grabbing the nine o'clock base. As the Ultra is clearing the fire bats. Actually, no medics with this as well. So that attack force getting completely wiped out. The Ultra seeing the science vessels starting to flee a little bit. A little bit nervous about getting irradiated here, but no irradiates being dropped. And it looks like with a single swarm, The Radiate actually might help the Ultralisks here. Should be able to wipe out everything here. Kiko lifting off that base, just sacking it. Luckily for him, there's no additional ult defilers to press towards that natural expansion. Otherwise, that could have been game right here. But with this machine taking a 40 supply lead. Firebats on the wing. Firebats do not trade very well with Ultralisks though. Good at killing those Zerglings underneath and a flurry of Scourge pressing through and it looks like there was an invisible GG. Kiko frustrated in this match. Potentially. Game two goes to Machine as well and it is a rough start for Kiko. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for listening.